25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in in uh, less than two weeks. We're going to know who won the World Series. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to know who won the presidential election. And we might have our first first gentleman. Yes, right? we Pres- might. President Clinton might be the first first gentleman. Yep. I don't think that has anything to do with our next guest, though. Although the title of his book is The First First Gentleman. Uh, Love is the reason. And that, the, oh my gosh, that tells you everything about the little I know about this book. I, I'm not even halfway through it. Gerald Weaver is on the phone. He's a journalist, a contributor to the political magazine George. We've had people from George on before, yes. haven't we? Uh, he's a teacher of English and Latin. Um, I can do pig Latin, but not Latin. He's a stay-at-home dad. He's, <laughs> he's been a Capitol Hill chief of staff, a lobbyist, a campaign manager, and uh, the book, The First First Gentleman, is uh, multifaceted. Let me just put it that way. Gerald Weaver, uh, what an honor. Thank you so much for being on our show. I'm happy to be able to hear Robin and Larry. It's a, it's a great opportunity. Where are you calling from? Um, just outside Washington, D.C., uh, Bethesda, Maryland, inside the Beltway. Nice. So as, as we read the book, we, we, uh, the, well, the first thing I think any reader is going to ask themselves is, oh, is this about the Clintons? And uh, it's not. It's not about the Clintons. But did the idea stem from, from that at all? What, what was the origins of the idea? I actually finished um, writing it in April of 2000. 13, so that was the U.S. copyright date. I um, had two reasons for writing the book. I wanted to, uh, what, I, what I saw, well, I wanted to play into what I saw the, the voters in America are hungry for, which was somebody who was a political candidate who was authentic and genuine and didn't give canned speeches and didn't have an eye on the polls. Somebody that was going to be different and sort of puncture the political orthodoxy. So my candidate in the first first gentleman, Melinda Sherman, is just that sort of person and says lots of things that no other candidate would have said. And the, and the reason she does that is she cares more about her family and her relationship than she does about politics. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that um, sort of has been exceeded by reality. I and mean, we've had Trump and Sanders, I think, those sort of speak from the heart. Mm-hmm. But the, the second reason I wrote it is I wanted to do something to nudge along the evolution of gender roles in America, and I, I think that things are changing uh, fairly quickly. Uh, the election of a woman president would be a big deal, but I also think that a lot of eyes will be on her husband. And if, if we have a manly man who is the first first gentleman and he supports and his wife and lets her take the primary role, I think a lot of men would see that, take that as an example, and it, it would hasten along the evolution of gender roles. The evolution of what? Gender roles. Gender roles. Oh, gender roles, yes. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, and it is interesting how um, we seem to be reluctant to allow that to happen in, in our culture. And, I, and I'm not picking on us as Americans. I know we're doing probably better than a lot of the other countries in this world. But you, but you still... I see that with Robin all the time. Uh, w- w- I mean, just the other day, what was it, Robin? You were uh, She was talking to somebody, and, I, and, they, oh, the, and they talked to her differently than they might have talked to me. Yes. And I said, well, that is crazy. Why would they do? Well, you know, mm-hmm. she's she's just a, oh my gosh, she knows this business as well, if not better than I do. Um, but it's weird that they look at at us differently. Yeah, you touch on something really important. I think um, one of the things is that with any sort of change, there's a lot of headwinds. It's like pushing a boulder up a hill. And when it gets to a certain point at the top of the hill, it takes off. It's like a tipping point. And I, and I think maybe the election of a of a female president may be this tipping point because there's certainly a lot of headwinds for um, the equality of women. The other thing I think that's real important, and you sort of mentioned it, and Robin probably knows it better than you or I, that if you look at television and movies and books, it, the portrayal of women is such that women sort of have to be perfect. Men can be all kinds of flawed and get away with it, and, and that's very much true in politics. I mean, Hillary may have her flaws, but she behaves very cautiously and tries to put herself across as perfect and would never get away with the things her opponent <laughs> no absolutely no no i, I know so, so my candidate is a female and she's a she's young she's attractive she's a congressional medal of honor winner but she also is fairly flawed i mean she's psychologically and emotionally damaged and she does things that no candidate no female candidate would do because women have to be perfect she becomes pregnant on the campaign trail and tells people that she plans to breastfeed at cabinet meetings. 
Her brother is a famous gay actor, and four days before the election, he has a wedding which she attends. And she talks about the war on drugs and says it's a sin. She speaks openly about issues of faith. Yeah, yeah that, that's uh, sort of borderline bipolar. But um, some of the reasons why I, some of the reasons why I described your book as multifaceted. By yes, the way, yes, very much so. You're a genius. <laughs> well, wow, thank you, Robin. <laughs> the first half of the book, the love story, too. I, w- I want to stress that it's um, it, it's it's a very very strong love story, and I think one of the reasons that she's able to be such a good candidate is what matters to her is her is her love affair and her family. Um, I don't know if you remember Congressman Charlie Wilson. They made that movie about him um, called Charlie Wilson's Wars, and he, he he was my friend, and he once said. The two prohibitions against running for president are you can't be under 35 and you can't be born outside the United States. But they should add a third one, which is nobody who wants the job should be allowed to run. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is kind of funny. Uh, you know, it, Robin and I are in the music world also, and I, I don't want to take time out away from your interview, but I, I wanted to mention one thing that you just, some for some reason, it reminded me. Whenever you hear discussions about the greatest songwriters who ever lived, you hear men's names. You, there are so many great female songwriters that get left off of that list. And I don't want to get into it because that's not why you're here, but it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's the same exact thing. No, it's true. Uh, we, we've, uh, we've overlooked women for a long time. And it happens in two ways. And that is, um, if you look at history, um, there are a lot of times that uh, women have changed history and, and we don't, it's never reported. So... We, we don't get to see how women have changed things or how important women have been because their roles are, are, are overshadowed yeah. in general and also by the people who do the reporting. By the way, the love story part of this, I, I, I wanted to mention this, that the love story part of this shows uh, a gentleman who... Uh, <sighs> I mean, if he was all about himself, if he didn't love his wife, she wouldn't. Ha- she wouldn't be who she is. And we say that all the time about the behind every good man there's a great woman, mm-hmm. and this is exactly the opposite. It is the opposite, and in, in, in the love story, he's a, he's an older man and he's a single parent, and she's younger and she's sort of you know confused and a little bit lost. And what she loves about him is that he's nurturing and supportive, and she can mm-hmm. see that. By watching him take care of his kids as both a mother and a father and then he also sees in her uh, his opportunity to be a nurturer and a supporter and it's it's a different kind of love affair it's sort of a grown-up love affair and mm-hmm. um, I think it's one that's you know you'll see more of in the future and you have an extreme genuineness in your book no matter what kind of scenario you are painting at the time in the different chapters Thank you. I, um, the timing of the book. I mean, the yes. fact that the first first gentleman, I, that's kind of like one of those cosmic things, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hopefully it'll help bolster the book. But I, I just want the listeners to know this is really a wonderfully written book. And it's it's uh, in my hands. I have it. If you want it, call me. It's The First First Gentleman by Gerald Weaver. The rest of us have to go by it. I know it's a short interview, uh, Gerald. Do you have a, a, a uh, what's the, your advice on how to get it? Did we go to your website? You can, you can go to Amazon, it'll be there, or you can walk into your bookstore and order it. Some main bookstores will have it, but most will, you'll have to order it. And as I said, it's on Amazon, it's in bookdepository.com, and you can find all the information on my website, which is geraldweaverauthor.com. Okay, Gerald with a J, with a G, Gerald with a G, geraldweaverauthor.com. Uh, Gerald, thank you for being on the air with us. Good luck with the book. Any Anytime you're in Florida, let us know. We'd love to have you in the studio. Rob and Larry, thank you very much. You're welcome. We will be right back. Weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Watch for rough surf and strong rip currents at the beaches over the next couple of days. It'll be breezy this Thursday with some sunshine. There can be a shower along the coast, high 80 to 84. Partly cloudy Thursday night, lows in the low to mid-60s inland, 72 on the coast. For Friday, clouds and sunshine and breezy in the afternoon. There can be a shower again at the coast, the high 82 to 86. Saturday, partly sunny, high 82 to 86. 
From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Bundy.